Fellow explorers of latent space, the day has finally come. Midjourney video has landed. Now, is it the best video platform on the market? Probably not. I think it'd be probably on the lower half of this AI video model list, but does that mean it's not useful? Absolutely not. It has a lot of strengths, certainly some weaknesses. So let's get into those compared to some of the other AI video models out there and how Midjourney video might actually fit in your workflow. Let's get into it. Okay, right off the bat, if you are a fan of that characteristic Midjourney aesthetic, you are absolutely gonna love this thing. Now the physics isn't there yet, there's no audio gen, which we'll get into later, but the video extend feature is phenomenal and it is really, really fast and cheap. If you've been using Midjourney for a while like I have, you're gonna love just being able to click through your catalog and see it come to life. Right now, it is not text to video. It is only image to video. And it can work with upload in imagery or the content you already have on Midjourney. Now, basically how it works is you can choose high or low motion. So if we go into the UI over here, uh, this is just whether you're in your create tab or organize tab, if you click on an image, essentially down here, you'll see a new section, which is called animate image. And you've got two options, low motion and high motion. Automatic is essentially gonna take your existing prompt and pass that along. And then you've got manual where you can essentially append your own prompt to exert more fine grain uh, control over the kind of movement that you want. And all you get right now is low motion and high motion, and that is pretty much it. You can extend a clip up to four times, so that's a maximum of 20 seconds, and you're basically getting standard definition 480p output at 24 frames per second. There is no native upscaling in this tool as of right now. All right, first off, the generation time is exceedingly fast. Um, it works really well for this kind of vlogging aesthetic, wide angle camera, handheld that's been going viral all over the place. And of course you can extend a clip, as I mentioned, up to four times. Uh, so the results are pretty, pretty good. Um, I love this biking clip. Turned out very nice. It has that mid-journey aesthetic and clearly this dude is like calling out somebody that uh, cut him off. Now, of course, what you'll see with all of these generations, they're begging for dialogue. Like sure, you can take this clip and toss it into something like Runway ML for like character one and retarget the facial performance after the fact, but gosh, VO3 is spoilless. That's so much work and it just doesn't look nearly as good as native uh, audio and video generation. Now, Midjourney does okay in my handshake test. You can see ET really goes in for it, really goes in for it with that stern handshake. Um, but overall, physics is a weakness of this model. It doesn't matter if you're talking about, you know, uh, human anatomy, soft body or heart, or rigid body dynamics. It's gonna be a little bit wonky. Now it may get slightly better as user ratings roll in, but I don't expect it to be anywhere close to the state of the art unless they train a new model. Here's another handshake shot. Handshake number one, perfect. Handshake number two, oh God, what happened there? Now the advantage here is since the generation cost is pretty cheap, like essentially if you get on the pro plan at 60 bucks a month or 48 bucks a month if you're paying for the whole year, which a lot of people still are on their mid-journey subscriptions, you get unlimited video generation in relaxed mode. Now you can also, if you just wanna try this thing out, get one of the cheapest plans in the space, which is 10 bucks a month to get about 200 minutes of GPU time. But their cost per second is still roughly equivalent to generating one still image. And so clearly they're trying to undercut the competition uh, so that people will actually give this model a shot. Now, one of the things I absolutely love using Midjourney for is sort of abstract motion graphic visuals. And it does a great job of that. So I love this generation where you've got the headlocked augmented reality visuals to the face of the soldier. And yeah, just the bokeh, the depth of field, the reflections, the refractions, everything looks really, really good. Now, as you may know, Midjourney has a weakness for generating text. So this may not be the best thing if you're trying to do like text laden titles for motion graphics and things like that, but you can still get these abstract visuals. I really love this generation with a bunch of different monitors and things lighting up. So these kind of like augmented reality overlay visuals that I really enjoy doing, you can get some pretty decent results. So this is a clip that has been extended four times, giving me the full 20 seconds. And you can see, uh, you can get some pretty cool results out of this. Now, when it comes to my dinosaur test, the movement of the dinosaur itself is pretty decent, but you'll notice the entities and objects, especially this tank in the back, does this whole weird floaty thing. 
it reminds me a lot of sort of uh, Sora, where maybe the target subject matter looks fairly decent, but the things in the background are just like sort of the relative position and scale is just kind of all over the place. So here's another good example of what I mean by the relative scale is totally off. Um, you can see this person is like <laughs> walking in front of the guys taking a selfie and suddenly that person is a giant. So here's where you may have to hit the slot machine a few more times to get something slightly better. Uh, but again, the generation cost is pretty cheap, so I'm not complaining at the moment. Muzzle flashes look pretty good, like the flash itself and the lighting reactivity on the soldier over here looked fairly good, but I could not for the life of me get it to do fricking shell casings properly or smoke puffs. And you'll notice the explosion in the background is also in like this weird slow-mo position. Same thing over here, like the smoke just stays up, even though... The tracers are pretty decent. You're almost seeing shell casings come out over here. So if you figure out a good way to prompt mid-journey video to create realistic muzzle flashes, smoke puffs, and ideally fricking shell casings, let me know because there's something really weird about adding shell casings to AI-generated video in post-production. Now, mid-journey has always been good at replicating sort of that high-end Unreal Engine or Redshift 3D uh, ray trace aesthetic and mid journey video is no exception it does a great job it retains the fisheye lens distortion in this generation beautifully i've got this sweeping camera motion that looks great the bloom on the various light sources is great too but again if you notice sort of the but if you notice the cars themselves as we rotate around them it's sort of like multi-sided weird drone cars i mean if that's what you're looking for great but I have not had great success getting pretty good looking orbits, especially when there's a lot of subject matter in a scene. It does a lot better when you've got individual objects, but as it stands, I don't think this is gonna be one of the superior models for running through, through something like a photogrammetry or Gaussian splatting pipeline to pull out 3D models and scenes. I also noticed in terms of downsides, some of these generations get this weird sort of unsharp mass aesthetic. If you know what that is, it's one of the uh, techniques for sharpening and Adobe tools and other image and video processing tools. As the generation progresses, it gets these really weird hard edges. And I don't know if this is some post-processing they're doing or just a byproduct of the video generation process, but something I noticed, and let me know if you notice it too. Now, when it comes to testing fluid simulations here, it is not only pretty far from the state of the art, I often get these like weird choppy generations kind of like this, where it's like, I have no idea why this is going like 15 FPS on me. Um, maybe these are just early kinks that are gonna get ironed out. So if you're looking for physically plausible uh, fluid simulations, may not be the best model for you. Now where Mid Journey does absolutely excel is making these kind of abstract visualizations. And this one is something I extended four times to give me the full 20 second duration. I hope they remove that limit for like, uh, four times extension because this could be an amazing tool for screensavers, music videos, concert visuals. And those are the types of use cases where like you probably don't care that much about text. But then again, you maybe do care about things like audio reactivity. So kind of where I see this excelling right now is building out these abstract visuals that you take elsewhere into a tool like After Effects or Notch Designer if you're doing concert visuals and then uh, modifying it further uh, therein. So if you're in something like Notch, you can then use audio reactivity to modify this video as a basis and do that compositing in real time. All right, so all this to say, I think Midjourney's dropped a pretty decent first showing here for video. Obviously, they're kind of like the underdog right now where they were absolutely crushing it in image generation and then you had like 4.0, Flux, and a bunch of these other image generators hit the market. On the video side, VO3 is a clear leader and you've got a bunch of other really compelling alternatives in the space. And so I think they're still going to carve out a pretty decent niche for themselves, especially as they keep building out this product. Now there's a bunch of other things that we're used to in other video tools that I expect will graduate over here. Uh, certainly we want things like camera control, we want keyframing, um, but this is just the start. To be honest, the bit that I miss the most is just native audio generation. Now, if you've seen any of these ASMR clips that have been going viral all over the place, I mean, it is just breathtaking what you can generate. And like the double clank of the, of the knife as it cuts through this like massive kiwi that's semi-translucent, this massive grape, I mean, good Lord. It is 
astounding how used to this capability I am and how difficult it will be for me to go back. That said, I've got a massive amount of mid-journey image generation. So when I wanna do something quick and dirty, I don't care about audio. Let's say I'm doing something for my VFX channel. I certainly see a place for mid-journey in my uh, repertoire. But that isn't to say that mid-journey can't punch above its weight class. Like a lot of the human generations, especially these kind of like more moody aesthetics that I was trying to create, did really well. And it will do a pretty good job at retaining all the high frequency detail, especially for a standard definition 480p uh, clip. So I think once they roll out native upscaling, this stuff will get a lot better. But of course, this is something that you can toss into um, your upscaler of choice. But gosh, I cannot expect it to compete with VO anytime soon. I mean, especially when you're talking about just the tracers, the physics, everything else is just so, so good over here. Um, and plus the upscaling that you're gonna do over here, right? Like if you take one of these video generations and, it, and you click upscale right over here, um, this is gonna do a better job because I think they're passing along some of the underlying metadata rather than having this be like some video clip uh, that you just uploaded to a third party upscaler. So hopefully native upscaling drops on Midjourney soon and it'll get a lot better. But ultimately, this is what we're dealing with, right? Like, we're at this place where some of these tools like Vio kind of right show now. us that, like, AI video now feels like a generative camera in a soundstage where you're almost directing the talent. Like, you may not even need to exactly prompt uh, various pieces of dialogue. You can just give a higher order prompt, which is how a lot of the street interview stuff is done. And the model itself, since it's native audio and video out, will come up with some pretty, pretty clever uh, aligns for you. So suddenly every time you have this step where like three or four steps get collapsed down, right? Like just for audio generation, it's very hard to go back. And at the same time, it brings in a new type of creator. So I think similarly here, uh, for mid-journey first creators who are already loving creating image gener images inside of mid-journey and maybe haven't dabbled with the video or don't like jumping into another tool, I think we'll see another class of content that does really well for the constraints around the mid-journey tool itself. But yeah, unfortunately, I think there's just... What's a red flag that'll make you walk away immediately? If she paid for a picture with Chris Brown but won't go 50-50 on fries, I know she playing me like a sample plate. I mean, these that's videos a red are just flag that's always loud. Like, but like, and this is like people who would have never, don't even know what mid-journey is and don't even care, can jump straight into video generation. And they're coming around again, folks. That Google car and this is video still in the absolutely lead. blew up. You lap three cars to win. Tell us how you done it. I was just mapping the area for street view. Now, generating this kind of video with any other workflow, I think, is next to impossible. So clearly, VO3 has a huge lead over here. So I'm going to make another video talking about the broader AI video landscape since just so much has happened since I made my last video on it, uh, kind of mapping out the space and giving you the state of AI video. Um, but I got a feeling Midjourney is going to be kind of at the lower end of this list over here. Of course, there's really good open source video models out in the wild too, but VO3 takes the cake. I've got a prediction to make, another model that's going to jump in here. Now, another place where I think Midjourney might actually work is if you're doing this sort of choppier anime style aesthetic. It's obviously much easier for you to just come up with whatever dialogue because you don't have like amazing blend shapes for lip movements and things like that. And with tools like Topaz, Astra that are very, very close to general availability, you will have a path to go from your standard definition to at least higher def content that you can upload and integrate more easily with some of the other video tools that you might be using. So look, if you've already invested a bunch of time in Midjourney, you've got a bunch of you know style references sitting around, you're gonna absolutely love this tool. And the cost makes it an easy addition to your existing workflow. Again, really great examples of how it excels at anime. Pretty damn cool. Now it's interesting to see how all the various video platforms that aren't like big AI labs, uh, like Google, OpenAI, or Meta. Meta is a sleeper that we have to cover in a future video because they're working on some amazing things, but they're sort of doing it behind the scenes with a bunch of these Hollywood directors and then 
releasing perhaps the most simplified version of this stuff to consumers, on the other hand, almost targeting the same market that Pika's after, right? Like people who are just in Instagram and want to make fun little clips. Meanwhile, Luma and Higgsfield are specializing in sort of giving you control in different ways, whether that's video, camera motion, different types of, you know, essentially motion LoRa's, things like that. And so it's interesting to see sort of the specialization that's happening and how the landscape will look and what kind of niche mid-journey will find to create a wedge into this market. Right now, it's the fact that you've got either an existing library of content and SRFs that you want to build off of, that you want really cheap and fast video generation where you don't mind hitting the slot machine a bunch of times to get decent results. And three, you really don't care about audio generation all that much or doing something like cartoon animations where it's a little bit easier to do that dubbing in post-production. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about mid-journey video generation and if it lived up to the hype, how you see yourself using it. And as I work on an updated map of the AI video landscape and where things are going, let me know if there are specific models or questions you'd like to see covered in the comments below. That's it for this one. Bilal signing off. See y'all in the next one.